Welcome to your new English lesson. Today we are going to talk about John Milton, as you can see from the notes here. John Milton, we will focus on his life, his poetry and his literary career. Then, in another video, we will talk about his masterpiece, which is Paradise Lost. Now, let's focus on his life. John Milton was born in London into a wealthy Puritan family in 1608. Milton received a very good education. In fact, he had learned various languages and philosophy even before entering Cambridge University. After Cambridge, he spent some years studying Greek classics, Latin classics and music. In the same time, he devoted himself to his real vocation, which was writing poetry. In 1638, he decided to leave England for a two-year tour. And so he went through France and Italy, and he even met Galileo in Florence. So, for example, in uh, just to know you, uh, to let you know, in 1847, Solomon Alexander Hart, a, painter, a painter, represented Milton visiting Galileo when a prisoner of the Inquisition, when he was a prisoner of the Inquisition. So maybe if you are curious to have a look, um, this painting was inspired by this event. However, this two-year tour had to stop because of the outbreak of the civil war in England. So Milton went back to England, but he did not immediately take an active part in the political life of the country, although he sided with Cromwell. In 1642, he married Mary Powell, who was the daughter of a royalist, but the marriage uh, proved unhappy, uh, especially because Milton was, had a, a Puritan austerity and he was an excessive intellectual. So as a consequence, uh, he, Milton was uh, left by his wife quite immediately and this would later lead him to write some pamphlets in defense of divorce. So he, after this uh, event, he became a fierce advocate of divorce. In the late 1640s, Milton became more actively involved on the side of the Parliament and he was eventually nominated Latin Secretary to Cromwell. Milton admired Cromwell, um, greatly admired, also because Cromwell was, um, in Milton's opinion, uh, trying to suppress Catholicism and, the challenge, and trying to challenge the monarchy beliefs, uh, the monarchy's belief in the divine right to rule. As you, rem as you can remember, this was some, something which uh, the king uh, believed, so that his power uh, was uh, given to him by God. However, after Cromwell's death and the restoration, Milton, who had completely lost his sight, so in 1652, was imprisoned for a short time. Um, he eventually received a full pardon and lived his last years in London, writing his most important poetical works. Um, so in London, he, he died in London at the end, in 1674. We can say that Milton can be considered the most representative poet of his age. And this is because his poetry has at least four characteristics. So the first one is that his poetry is imbued with a Christian view of the word and the interpretation of the Christian faith. Milton, in fact, believed that uh, the man had been put on earth to serve God and the poet had the divine mission 
of justifying the ways of God to man. So in his opinion, a poet must explain to common people why God behaves in a way or in another. Hmm? However, even though he has this uh, mission, divine mission of justifying the ways of God to man, um, he was anti-clerical. So we, we have this in his poetry, we have this element in this poetry. Um, and he was able to use mythology to serve a Christian purpose. Mythology, which is uh, something classical, mm. so not uh, really Christian. And we will see this in Paradise Lost. The second element is that uh, he combines uh, the Puritan spirit with the Renaissance and humanist, humanist ideals. So, as, as we said, mm, he, has, he uses Christian religious tradition and classical forms uh, together with the um, mythological elements. His poetry has also republican, republican and anti-monarchic ideals and is rich in artificial um, elements. It, uh, it is written in a highly artificial style, which is made up of long sentences. There are many subordinate clauses, uh, also Latin words. Uh, and uh, his aim is to create a solemn and musical poetical language. When we talk about his literary career, we can divide his um, career into three periods. The first period, the second period and the third period. The first period, it includes his first poetical works, which were written during Charles I's reign. So we have in this period L'Allegro and Il Pensieroso, for example, which were written in 1632. And they are two poems that reflect the spirit of the Renaissance. And they represent uh, two different sides of life. For example, something light-hearted, allegro, and something melancholic, Il Pensieroso. They are not the only um, poetical works uh, written in this period, because uh, we have, for example, uh, the Ode on the Morning of Christ's Nativity, written in 1629, Comus and Lycidas, hmm? but we won't focus on this period. Then we have the second period, which includes prose works and uh, 23 Petrarchan sonnets. But the most important period is the third period, in, wh in which we have his major poetical works. We have Paradise Lost, which, he, which can be considered his, par his uh, masterpiece. Hmm? It was written in 1667. Then we have par Paradise Regained and Samson Agonistes. However, before analyzing Paradise Lost, I would like you to focus a little bit on the second period. So in this second period, we have prose works and 23 Petrarchan sonnets. Mm. Uh, Petrarchan sonnets, it means that we have uh, an octave plus a sestet, mm. the Petrarchan way mm, of writing a sonnet. And some of them were also written in Italian. His sonnets can be divided into two groups. The first is about love sonnet, so it's about love. And the second one, a second group of sonnets is about a different um, topics, miscellaneous subjects. So for example, uh, praising a friend or uh, giving pieces of advice to friends or uh, threatening an enemy. And we also have one sonnet, which is about his blindness. So it is called On His Blindness. It is an autobiographical sonnet. And in this sonnet, 
Milton meditates on the fact that he has become blind and he is uh, worried that his only talent, so his ability to write, may suffer and that he will not be able to serve God as well as he desires. In the sonnet, however, he is answered by patience, who tells him that God that not, does not really need man's work. So, especially because God values man's ability to tolerate whatever God asks faithfully and without complaint. So, in this sonnet, he, on his blindness, we have Milton's inner conflict, which is based on the typically Puritan view, according to which you have a moral duty to use uh, the gift, the talent hmm, you have received from God. Now, I would like to conclude this lesson, to finish this lesson, with some questions for you. So, what is your special talent? How do you use your talent? Or how do you plan to use your talent? Mm. So, do you agree with the idea, which Milton explained in, uh, in, in, the, in the sonnet, that the saddest thing in life is wasted talent? So, I would like you to post a comment under this video and share your ideas with the class. So, goodbye for now. Let's uh, talk about another topic next time, okay? Bye!